The recent loss of separation event at San Diego's Lindbergh Airfield, where a Cessna Citation jet overflew a Southwest jet on a go-around, has once again highlighted in the national news our chronic overworked and understaffed air traffic control here in the United States. Let's check it out. That's going to verify. Zero Alpha Lindbergh Tower, you'll be number four for departure. I do have an amendment to your altitude. Advise ready to copy. Outside block. November uh, 2110 Alpha Lindbergh Tower, I have an amendment to your departure. Advise ready to copy. Ready to copy, one zero Alpha. I'll verify uh, four hotel vectors still going to land. By heading 275, our question just by the village was approached. There you go. Location 4 Victor Hotel, go around, slide the published missed approach. All right, going around, 4 Victor. Tower Southwest 2493. Southwest 2493, Olympic Tower, exit the runway, right turn at Charlie 2, all the way on to Charlie, please. Roger, and uh, reasoning? There's traffic on a two-mile final behind you. San Diego's Lindbergh Airport is located right here, right in the middle of the San Diego Class B or Bravo airspace. This being some of the busiest airspace in the country with the airport located in that airspace that goes all the way down to the surface. One of the first questions the general public has is how is it that you're able to clear a Southwest jet to line up and wait for takeoff on the same runway that you've already cleared not one but two aircraft to land on. Well, it's here in the rules and regulations for air traffic control that make this policy legal here in the United States, given a couple of certain conditions that this situation qualified for. First, because Lindbergh Field is located in some of the busiest airspace around, they have airport surface detection equipment, ASDE. They have an automated system that backs up the controller just in the event of a situation like this if the controller forgets or loses situational awareness this automatic equipment will alert the controller that they are about to lose or losing separation the legal separation between two aircraft the southwest jet was given a line up and wait clearance remember this used to be the old taxi into position and hold clearance but that terminology has since been changed by the way I can't vouch for the date of this particular document. It may be out of date. But this allows the Southwest jet to taxi onto the runway and hold while the controller is anticipating getting separation from aircraft that have already departed ahead of the Southwest jet. Once that separation is achieved, she will then clear the Southwest jet for takeoff. Now this poorly worded paragraph B is what allows you to do this. Do not authorize an aircraft to line up and wait if, if an aircraft has been cleared to land, touch and go, stop and go option on the same runway, except when the reported weather conditions are less than 802. That is to say, if the weather is below 802, no, you can't do it. If the weather is better than 802 and the facility has safety logic systems in place, like the ASDE or airport surface detection equipment, in place in full core alert mode, you now may issue a landing clearance for a full stop, touch and go, stop and go option or unrestricted low approach to an arriving aircraft with an aircraft holding in position or taxing to a line up and wait clearance on the same runway. So that's what makes it legal. And it's the automation that helped to save the day in this particular case. Let's check it out. So with permission and help from our friend Victor over at Vass Aviation, we'll use his video to put this thing together. Victor uses real ATC audio to put together these visual representations. So go ahead and support both Victor at Vass Aviation and real ATC for getting this information out so quick to the public. Now here's the weather at the time of this incident. Uh, winds 250 at 7. We got a broken layer at 1,100 feet, a broken layer at 1,800 feet, and a broken layer at 25,000 feet. So the weather is better than 802. They also have the automatic reporting system in effect, so they are legal to do lineup and wait procedures and clear aircraft to land simultaneously. Well, Tower 564, Hotel Victor on the... Uh... Yeah, I'm sorry, 
Chief, you have to say anything. Number 564, Hotel Victor Limber position with 260 at 10, Roma 27. Mark Colonel Land 27, 4 Hotel Victor. Okay, she clears the Cessna citation into land, and she tells him that the Southwest jet will be in position and hold. So this is one of those bookcases where she can clear somebody to land and then place somebody into position and hold in front of them. Southwest 2493, Limber Tower, traffic 5 mile final, and 250 at 11, runway 27, line up the wait. 27 mile flight, Southwest 24. So now Southwest gets his line up and wait clearance, with the citation on final. Southwest 2895, turn left at Bravo 8, taxi spot 1, contact ramp tower 129.77. Good day. Hey, Bravo 8, taxi to spot 1 and over to ramp tower for Delta 2895. That's all traffic down the runway ahead. Alaska 772, 9.5, back, RP, Mike 27. Alaska 772, Lumber Tower, 1250 at 10, Roma 27, clear to land. Clear to land 27, Alaska 772. Okay, now she clears Alaska into land. Number two, out of the instrument approach. Remember, these are not visual approaches. These are instrument approaches as they got to work their way through that broken layer. But she didn't say anything about the Southwest jet to Alaska because she's planning on getting all this separation sorted out. She's putting Southwest into position and hold while she waits for um, separation from aircraft that have taken off ahead of Southwest. Then she's going to land the uh, Citation jet, and then long after the both of them are down, she's going to land Alaska. So there's no requirement to tell Alaska about the Southwest jet because she's planning on him not being there by the time he comes in to land. And there's the weather. Okay. That's all verified. Zero Alpha Limber Tower, you'll be number four for departure. I do have an amendment to your altitude advisory to copy. Did you catch that? <laughs> The citation saying, just want to verify, he sees the situation developing. I don't know if he can see it if he's out of the clouds yet, but he's got the situational awareness to realize that the situation is developing. The Southwest jet has not yet been cleared for takeoff, and he's coming in ever closer from that five-mile final to the citation. Meanwhile, the controller begins to talking to yet another aircraft, either the third or fourth or fifth aircraft, about a clearance. Okay, block. Yeah. Number uh, 2110 Alpha Limber Tower, I have a amendment to your departure. Advise ready to copy. Ready to copy, Limber Alpha. Now, this is where the ATC system is overtaxed um, and understaffed. In my opinion, this conversation should be handled by another controller who is handling clearance delivery. She's talking to yet another aircraft about their IFR clearance another aircraft that's still on the ground somewhere at San Diego to get their IFR clearance out of here. Meanwhile, she loses track of the current situation at hand, and this is where the automation helps to alert her that, oh yeah, we've got the uh, citation on final and I, I have not yet cleared the uh, Southwest jet to take off. I'll verify uh, four hotel vectors still clear to land. By heading 275, our person to fly the village with approach. Once again, blocked radios. These uh, ATC radios, the radios we use in aviation, they can only handle one thing at a time. If two people key up the radio at the si same time, it just blocks the frequency and nothing gets out. So the citation sees that things are not developing well, and then she tries to clear him to start his missed approach, but he blocked his, her transmission. Remember, you can always go around as pilot in command. If you see the situation not developing well, if you see ATC not keeping up with the situation, you can take it on your own volition to initiate your own go around. There you go. Location four, Victor Hotel, go around, flight the published missed approach. All right, going around four to Victor. They finally get it sorted out. And they... South of 2493. Southwest 2493, Limburg Tower, exit the runway, right turn at Charlie 2, all the way on to Charlie, please. Roger, and uh, reasoning? There's traffic on a two-mile final behind you. Southwest, I ain't got time to argue with you. Remember, Alaska was cleared to land. This whole thing got messed up. We got to clear the deck here. We got to get Southwest out of the way because she didn't tell Alaska that Southwest would be holding short prior to his arrival. Get everything cleared up and start over. Okay, we are 
Sorry, exiting on the, uh, taking the right exit, Charlie 2, Southwest 2493. Station 4, Victor Hotel, contact uh, Christian Swimmer for the seat for a moment. All right, we'll stay with you. Southwest 2493, one able, hold short, runway 27 at Charlie 1. Southwest Do you still want to start with you for 564 Auto Victor? 4 Auto Victor, contact SoCal 119.6. 196, 4 Auto Victor. So that might be another indication of things getting going down the tubes here a little bit for this controller. She kind of wanted to hang on to that citation for a few more minutes while he got out of her airspace, and then the citation had a reminder hey man, do you want us to go over to uh, SoCal by now? Meanwhile, Southwest wants to get going because they're paid by the leg, not the hour. Check this out. And our South is 2493. Does that make us number five now for departure? 2493, can you make a slight right turn to hold short of 27 at Charlie 2? Uh, I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, we can do that. Southwest 2493, hold short of runway 27 at Charlie 2. Hold short of 27 at Charlie 2, Southwest 2493. So he does a 180 to come back around, and Southwest departs 10 minutes later after exiting the runway. This whole business of line up and wait being allowed with aircraft being cleared to land on final is something that's kind of unique to the United States. If you fly overseas, you will not see these kind of um, rules permitted overseas. Uh, when you come in to land at London's Heathrow Airport, for example, well, they have the luxury of having multiple parallel runways and having one runway for departures and one runway for landings. But you will not be cleared to land until that runway is perfectly clear for you to land on. So that means uh, when you're coming in to land behind somebody else, you will not get your clearance to land until the aircraft ahead of you has completely cleared off of the runway. This is something maybe we should consider here in the United States, but because of the high volume and traffic here in the United States, maybe it wouldn't work. But just because this is the way we do it here in the United States doesn't mean that it's the way it is done all around the world, nor is it perhaps the best policies and procedures so though this appeared to be a close call and it was it was a hundred foot vertical separation these sort of go arounds do happen not terribly frequently but they do happen as pilots we got to remember we got to continue to remember that we are working in an over, overworked understaffed atc environment at all times and we got to be especially vigilant to make sure these atc controllers are doing the right thing and be ready to go around or do something else if you can see that the situation is not developing well. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.